Greetings and good morning. A hello to also to all our friends watching from all around different places this morning. At least for us here in Minnesota, below freezing. Is that the first time this season? Now in Minnesota, is that just a little chilly? Or is that, or is that, is that cold? <laughs> chilly. A little cool. All right. The season is upon us. We're happy that you're here. We're glad all of you have, who have joined us online. What a beautiful day. Not a whole lot in terms of announcements this morning. Just, of course, the little green flyer. It's for Thanksgiving baskets. That's an annual tradition for us here. On November 13th, they'll pack all those out so you can read the information there and how you can be a part of that. Speaking of an opportunity, 
We've played the video a few times. Operation Christmas Child. No, it's Oper I've got so many operations. Operation Christmas Child, shoe boxes. Now here's the good news. If, say, you don't feel you can do an entire box yourself, if you want to just donate an item or two, the kids club, the Awana, are going to pack boxes for such things as that. There's a tub under the table outside in the foyer. You can see a gray tub there for taking donations for shoebox items. So if you just want to donate one or two things and not do an entire box, you have an opportunity to help that ministry as well in that way. And they'll pack those boxes on about a week and a half next Wednesday. All right, everything else, you've seen the rescheduled craft night date. Also the Thanksgiving service, make sure you know that's a Sunday night, the 21st, 6.30, and some snack and fellowship time afterwards. All the other things you can see there, but most importantly, what we want to make sure you look through the prayer list. Oh, got some advertising. This is part of the craft night display. Hopefully someone can see autumn blessings. And those are nice, aren't they? You can see Jess sometime today if you'd like to get involved. So maybe there was a reason it needed to be delayed so more of you can be take part in that. That's really nice things. So that's also in the bulletin as well. But um, hopefully you're downloading and looking at the bulletin. Hopefully you'll keep last week's handy so you can always compare and see which names get added. And we have tons of changes this week. Sickness, the wave is hitting. Some of it is the COVID, but a lot of harsh sickness. So we need to be in prayer for those who are struggling a little harder this time with illness. And their names are in the bulletin there, and you can add those to your prayer list. And speaking of prayer, let's pray. Heavenly Father, loving God, Almighty Father, we praise you, we thank you. We give you glory. We want to lift up our voices and sing to you. We want to ingest and hear the words that are presented to us through your scriptures and through Pastor Jim and his message. Stir our hearts, our minds. Open our eyes as we look for ministry opportunities that you provide to us throughout each and every day. For the responsibility, it is one we don't take lightly. We are humbled that you love us so much that you would want to have a relationship with us. You want to hear from us. You have provided all these things for us to be involved with. So, Father, we want to just lift up all the prayerless names, each soul in which your Son has died for, each one that we can lift up in intercession and pray for, stir our hearts and our minds to respond. We thank you for this hour that we fellowship together. We thank you for this hour that brings us more focused into your presence because you are here. Move amongst us in your Holy Spirit and help us, empower us, move us, and may we bring our world a little closer to you. May we praise you, worship you, and sing your songs in Jesus' name. Amen. Scripture says, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And we are going to start with the hymn called Holy, Holy, Holy today. If you'll join us to stand and sing.
next song we're going to sing this morning is Come As You Are.
Heavenly Father, you are the way maker. Thank you. You are holy. And Father, as we have come here again into your house today, we thank and praise your holy name. Looking forward to the word that you have for us. We pray now again, Lord, that you would help us to just settle in your presence this morning, to surrender unto you the King of Kings, Lord, and have ears to hear from you now in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. And our little ones, well, we'll dismiss you if you haven't left already. Little ones will dismiss to uh, Children's Church right now. God is good, amen? Those songs, I love those songs, those words and those songs. I hope they have moved you this morning, moved you to uh, a new level of worship. It's good to see you on a beautiful morning. Charles is right. We've got a lot of sick folks in our communities. We've done more funerals this week. We've lost folks. And so uh, please keep one eye to the prayer focus. There's always names there, always hurting folks, always people that would so appreciate your prayers. Last week we looked at Luke chapter 12. And Jesus reminded us in that passage midway through the chapter about worry. As a matter of fact, he said, do not worry about the things of life because we can't change them by worrying anyway. That's what we looked at last week. I mentioned to us last week, yes, there are things in life that concern us. That's, that's a fact. But Jesus said in Matthew 6 and then in Luke 12 both, he said, do not worry. We should rather turn that worry into prayer and pray for things that concern us. Pray for things that are weighty. We should pray through, all the way through, whatever it is. Then when I got to the last verse where we stopped last week, we got to the Cure. Remember, the title is The Cure for Anxiety. When I got to the cure part of the anxiety equation, Jesus said what? Seek his kingdom. And so I'm going to pick it up from there and press on. I, I said last week I wanted to define a little bit more about what does seeking the kingdom of God mean? And so I'm going to pick it up from there just a little bit. I mentioned to you last week, Matthew 6, 33. I love that verse. I quote it often to people uh, in many, many situations. But Jesus said, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and these things that we concern ourselves about and worry about he said, shall be added unto you. That's Matthew 6, 33, which says the same thing that Luke 12, 31 says. You know what, though? Sometimes I think we find ourselves, instead of seeking him first, we find ourselves in desperate situations, and perhaps we, it is our tendency to seek him as a last resort. When Jesus says we need to seek him first in all things. So let's pick it up again. Luke 12. If you got your Bible, if you don't, it'll be on the big screen. But uh, let's pick it up on the verse we left off with last week and go from there. Just a few verses. I'm in Luke chapter 12, beginning at verse 31. Here we go. Here's what Jesus said. But seek the kingdom of God. You know the setting because we were there last week. He was talking about worrying about all this other stuff. And he, he concludes with, but seek the kingdom of God. And all these things shall be added to you. The very next verse, he says this, do not fear little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. That's really good news, by the way. Amen. That's really good news. I read that, you know, numerous times this week, and I'm thinking the words of Jesus 
are encouraging his disciples that day and encouraging us today. It is your Father, our Father in heaven, it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. To who? Those who are seeking the kingdom of God. It is the Father's good pleasure to give that to us. Why in the world would we not want to be seeking his kingdom? Knowing that it is the Father's good pleasure to give it to them that are seeking. I've thought about that and I'm thinking, why would we want to miss out on that? Let me say this before I press on a couple more verses. The kingdom does not come to you and I if we're not seeking God and his righteousness. Okay? Look at what he said here. But seek the kingdom of God. But seek the kingdom of God. And all these things that we're worrying about, all of life that get us stressed out and bogged down and burden us, all these things shall be added to you. And when he says, do not fear, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, I think he meant it. Then he says, what does that look like, seeking God? Here, here we're going to define seeking the kingdom of God just a little bit today. What does that look like? He begins to elaborate in verse 33. He says, sell what you have and give alms. You say, Jim, I don't know if I can do that. Hang on, let's just see what he says. Sell what you have and give alms. Provide yourself money bags which do not grow old. Their earthly money bags would have grown old. They would have deteriorated. But Jesus says, provide for yourselves money bags which do not grow old. In other words, treasures in heaven that do not fail. That's what we should be seeking towards. Laying up for yourselves, he said in Matthew 6, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where thieves don't steal that and corrupt rust and stuff doesn't corrupt that. And so he's saying the same thing here. Sell what you have and give alms. Provide yourselves money bags which do not grow old, a treasure in heaven that does not fail where no thief approaches nor moth destroys. For where your treasure is... There your heart will be also. Let me, let me just break that down a little for us. I think we get that. But as I pondered that the other day, I'm reading this over and over, and I pondered that, and I said to myself, wait a second, you mean to tell me that if I'm loading up on material things in this life and worrying about all the material things of this life that just produces more anxiety versus what Jesus said, if I would lay up treasure in heaven and not worry about material things, I would have less anxiety? Is that what he's saying? You still with me, brothers and sisters? Haven't lost you yet, have I? So I'm reading in the Bible knowledge commentary on this matter. And I shall quote from the Bible knowledge commentary for a moment. Here's what it said. Finally, Jesus pointed out that worry is foolish because it is the attitude of pagans. Ouch! That's what the Bible commentary says. Worry is foolish because it is the attitude of pagans. And it doesn't end there. It, it builds on that. It elaborates a little bit. The pagan world is concerned about material things of life and not life's ultimately important spiritual realities. That's true. The pagan world, as the commentary said, would be concerned about the material things of life and not necessarily about what's ultimately important, which is spiritual realities. He goes on to say, Jesus' point here in this scripture was that if his followers had treasures on earth, 
they would think about that. But if instead they had treasure in heaven, which is safe from thieves and decay, they would be concerned with matters pertaining to the kingdom and therefore would not be in a state of anxiety, end quote. <laughs> you still with me? I'm thinking this applies right here first, okay? I'm speaking to Jim as much as anybody else. Seeking the kingdom brings peace. Knowing the Christ of the cross as Savior and Lord brings peace. Seeking after stuff and laying up treasures on earth brings anxiety. You still with me? <laughs> I'm thinking about uh, Jim needs to make some adjustments here. We can argue all day long. Well, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. He's talking about food and clothes here, Jim. I need to provide for my family. I need to do this. The Bible is, that's true. The Bible says, let a man not eat if he doesn't work. That is true. But look at what Jesus said last week in verses 22 and 23, if you've got your Bible open. Then he said to his disciples, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about the body, what you will put on. Remember what he said? Do not worry about that. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. And then Jesus went on to tell us last week, he takes care of the birds, he'll take care of you. I say hallelujah. The problem is we trust in ourselves, and we don't seek him first. We don't trust him first. We are limiting God to what we can do. And when we limit God to what we can do, we're not seeking him. We're seeking after us. That's what he said. So what does the kingdom, seek the kingdom of God mean anyway? Let us start with some basics, and I shall progress on for just a few more minutes. To seek God's kingdom. And that's what Jesus said is most important. We must be people that seek his kingdom and his righteousness. Where does that all start? To seek God's kingdom means starting by making Jesus the Christ, Lord and Savior and Master of our lives. That's where it starts. We must invite Christ to be Lord and Master of our lives. He must control. This is seeking the kingdom. He must control Jim's life. That's what he's talking about. Our life. He must control. Once we have made Christ Lord and Savior, he must be in charge of my work life, of my personal life, of my plans, of my relationships in life, of my finances, of my education, of my dreams, you name it. To seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness means putting him first, and putting him in charge of all of that. You still with me, friends? If he is not Lord of all, he is probably not Lord at all. That's what he's talking about. When Jesus said in the Gospels so many times, we must be willing to deny ourselves to become his follower. He meant it. I'm going to refer, I got to take a swig of my propel here, but I'm going to refer just a moment to a song we sang last week. You can be thinking about this while I take a swig. Do you remember the song we closed last week? 
Anybody? We sung, Are You Washed in the Blood? That's in our songbook on page 190. There are some great words in there. I'm going I'm to elaborate on those in just a minute. But that is describing seeking the kingdom of God. That's what we closed with last week. And that breaks it down for us and describes it. Let me, let me remind us what we sang. When we sang page 190 last week. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? That's where it starts. Are you fully trusting in his grace this hour? We sang these, verse, these words last week. That's seeking his kingdom. Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? That's where it starts, seeking the kingdom of God. Do you rest, oh, I love this phrase, do you rest each moment in the crucified? That's what we sang last week. That's what it's describing, seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin. That's seeking the kingdom. We sang those things last week to close. Now, friends, listen to me. I'm telling you, I'm talking to Jim first here. But if there's application for you, then so be it. If there are areas in our lives, mine starting with me, if there are areas in your life or mine that we have not turned completely over to Christ, completely, I've mentioned just a few things, our daily living, our quiet time when nobody else is looking, our ambitions for life, our relationships, our finances, if we haven't turned everything over to Him, we're seeking our will, not the kingdom of God. That's what it means when Jesus said, when you seek me that way. Oh, I love that phrase. It's his good pleasure to give us the kingdom. But we have got, we, we've got this tendency, and I'm guilty, perhaps you are, we've got this tendency to do it my way. Or our way. And only if we get into a crisis moment will we seek him. Are you still with me, friends? Am I the only one guilty of that? Jesus said, if we will seek the kingdom first and his righteousness, he said, first of all, I will take care of your daily needs. And then he said in Luke, it is his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. But if we're always doing what we want to do, if Jim is always doing what Jim wants to do, I'm not seeking his kingdom. And it's the same for you. Remember that statistic I shared with you to begin with last week? Anybody remember that? Thank you, Jeff. Somebody does. Chris, thank you. Here's what I shared with you to start last week. In 1980, more than 90% of Americans claimed to be Christians. 90% of Americans in 1980 claimed to be Christian. That number has now dropped to 66%. Who even claim? 34% don't even claim any part of Christianity today in America. That's tragic enough, but then he built, George Barna built on that statistic with this. Of the 66 that claim to be Christian, he said only 6% possess a biblical worldview. What does that mean? Of the 60%, it means some of them do not believe the Bible is true. I'm a Christian, but I don't believe the Bible. Of the 60% it says, I'm a Christian, but I don't believe Jesus was born of a virgin. I'm a Christian, but I don't believe the Holy Spirit is real. I'm a Christian, but I don't believe the resurrection of the dead. Only 6% of Americans have a biblical worldview that believe the Word of God is still the inerrant Word of God. Only 6%. 
Why do I bring that up again? Because that is a result of seeking me and my will and our rights and our agenda instead of the kingdom of God. That's a result. We as a nation have not sought the kingdom of God. We wouldn't be at this place if we had. The masses in society, according to that statistic, are no longer seeking God. We're seeking after what we want. And we're guilty in and out of the church. What does seek the kingdom of God intentionally mean? Is he savior? Is he master? Is Jesus Lord of everything in my life? Do I spend time intentionally with him? I spend time in everything else. I spend time planning for the next vacation. I spend time planning for this. I spend time at work. I spend time getting ready. I spend for work or, or school. I spend time for all that. Do, do I give anything to him? Am I seeking him for anything, much less everything? That's what seeking the kingdom looks like. How much effort in the week do I Give to laying up treasure on earth versus laying up treasures in heaven. That's the difference between seeking the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, versus seeking our own will. You say, Jim, you're getting on my toes now. I'm getting on Jim's toes first. This is what Jesus said. If Jim is not passionate about spending time with God now, today, in this life, not just on Sunday, but if Jim is not passionate about spending time with God in my day-to-day -day routine, Monday through Saturday also, if I don't have time for him, if he only gets what's left over of this, that, or the other thing, if I don't have time for corporate worship or time for prayer or time for his word. What is he going to say to Jim on that day when I stand before the judgment of God? If I don't have any time to seek him today in everything, what is he going to say to Jim on that day? Probably going to say, depart from me. I don't know who you are. Let me wrap this up, friends with a couple of things to ponder. Seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness is doing life about Jesus and no longer doing life about Jim. Are you hearing me? Seeking the kingdom of God is doing life now about Jesus and no longer about self. That's why Jesus said so often, you must deny yourself. I've got to give that up and put my faith, my trust, my family, the ministry, my health, everything in his hands. Seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness is doing life about Jesus. It is no longer doing life about self. Think of the 12 for a moment. Jesus called the 12 to follow and said, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Think about what they gave up for a moment. And masses of people, multitudes of people down through the ages. That's what he's talking about. Seeking the kingdom of God. Doesn't mean every one of us are going to become a pastor. Some may. But I'm seeking him for what he wants for me versus what I want for me. It doesn't mean he might take every way, 
everything away from you. He said, I will take care of you. He said, Jesus said, it's the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. You see what he's saying? He's not be taking everything away. He wants to give his kingdom. But seeking the kingdom of God means I've got to get self out of the way. Allow me to quote Rick Warren from his book, Purpose Driven Life, just once more. I haven't quoted Rick for years, and whether you're a fan of Rick Warren or not is less relevant than this statement because this statement is true. And if you've read the book, The Purpose Driven Life, it's a great book, came out years ago, sold 45 million copies. There's a lot of truth in it. But in the very first line of the book, the very first five words after the title, it says, it's not about you. Anybody read the book, Purpose Driven Life, when it came out years ago? The very first line, Rick says in that book, it's not about you about you. Now that gives most Americans a heartburn right there. (laughs) Because we think it is about us. Life is all about me. It revolves around me and what I want. But that's a true statement. It goes right along with what Jesus said when he says, seek first the kingdom of God. And then he elaborates further. He said, it's not about you. The purpose of life is far greater than your personal fulfillment, your peace of mind, or even your happiness. That made some people literally put the book down, said, I'm done with this book. I'm not kidding you. People have told me that. Because we think it is all about us. In America especially. We think it is all about us. And Rick said, it's not about you. And Jesus said, it's not about you. The purpose of life is far greater than your personal fulfillment, your peace of mind, or even your happiness. It's far greater than your family, your career, or even your wildest dreams and ambitions. If you want to know why you were placed on this planet, you must begin with God. End quote. That's what Jesus is talking about. When Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God, that's what he means. And when we do, it's God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Is that not a good deal? That's a good deal. Why would we not want to seek him and his kingdom first? This question then we'll sing. Can you imagine for a moment what God could do in America with a family, with a church? with a community or with a nation that genuinely sought the face of God and his kingdom and his righteousness first. Could you imagine what God would do if we would genuinely seek him first? Why do I say that? Well, because of what Jesus said, do not fear little flock for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Could you imagine what would happen if an entire community would do that or a nation would seek him first? It's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Our cure for worry and anxiety 
and hopelessness is to start by seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness like we have never done before. That personal trust in Christ, that personal surrender and say, Lord, and mean it, it's all yours. My life, my health, my family, my occupation, my degree, my possessions, my relationships, it's all yours. When we get to that level, it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So, friends, as we sang last week, will you rest each moment in the crucified? Will you trust him with everything? Will you surrender to him everything? Not only does eternity depend on what I do with Jesus, our daily lives depend on what we have done with Jesus. Is he Lord or is he just an afterthought when I have time? May we trust him completely. May we seek him fully. May we seek his kingdom and his righteousness always and allow him in his good pleasure to give you and I and people that are seeking him the kingdom. Amen? Let's close with this last song. Well, being I'm up here by myself, we'll see how we can play and sing this one at the same time.
Friends, I want to close in prayer. And I want to say too, before we leave, life will run out on all of us. And whether you believe in the Word of God or not today, that's between you and the Lord. I think it's true. I think it's all real. I think heaven and hell are real. I believe we've got the Word of God to instruct us and find our way to the cross and to Christ, the one that died on the cross. By faith, that's where it all starts. And when we have put our faith in Christ, as Jesus said to us today and his disciples on that day, seek first his kingdom. When we do, friends, amazing things happen. I'm not talking about prosperity gospel here. I'm talking about what Jesus said. I will take care of you. And it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom when you really come to, the, come to faith in Christ and seek the Father. That's what Jesus said. And so I don't know where you're at today in your walk with Jesus, friends, but I want to encourage you. If you're not quite where you sense you should be or could be, you say, Jim, I believe in God. That's wonderful. Have you given your life to Christ? Are you seeking first the kingdom of God for everything? Are you trusting him for every detail? Are you resting each moment in the crucified? That's what I'm asking. And if you're not sure, take some time today to get alone with Jesus and just cry out to him by faith. Father, I need you. I love you. I believe your word is true. And I want you as Lord and Savior of my life. I commit my life to you. Forgive me of my sins and come into my life and take control. If you have not committed your life to Christ completely, may I encourage you, friends, don't wait any longer. Eternity depends on what we do with Jesus. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Your word is truth. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your teachings and your instruction. Thank you for your great love for us that keeps beckoning us. Come, come, come to the Master. Thank you for your grace, O oh God, that's willing to forgive us no matter where we have been because our sin did indeed take us far from you. But your grace is so available when we will repent of our sin and call upon Jesus. Your word says if we confess our sins, he is faithful. That's you, O oh God. Faithful to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father, thank you for loving us. Draw us to you. Draw us to that place of dependence upon you. Help us as your people and, and brothers and sisters all over our communities and the world to seek first the kingdom of God and just watch how you take care. Just watch, as Jesus said, it is your Father's good pleasure to give us a kingdom. Father, I pray that we would be people that seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness and just watch you respond. Thank you, Father, for each one here today. I pray for the sick. Touch them. I pray for the hurting. Encourage them. I pray for the wayward. Draw them back. I pray for the church, this congregation, but larger, the church of followers of Jesus Christ, that we would seek you first. For your glory, the advancing of your kingdom, I pray it all in the name of Jesus. Amen.